Was Bottazzini the Elvis of his time? What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and welcome to Stupid Base History. This is an irreverent, but pretty much factual, look at historical figures in the world of the double base. And Stupid Base History, is that a good name? I'm not sure. What's This history is not really that stupid. Let me know if you got a better name in the comments. Giovanni Bottazzini was born in Crema in northern Italy. He was taught music by his father, an accomplished clarinetist and composer, and he found himself playing timpani by age 11. His father sought a place for him in the Milan Conservatory, but the Bottazzini family did not have a lot of money, so Giovanni needed a scholarship. Only two positions were available, double bass and bassoon. He prepared a successful audition for the double bass scholarship in a matter of weeks. By the way, I'm pretty sure the correct pronunciation is Bottazzini, but I'm a Midwestern person, lived in Chicago for decades. Stubbers. Stubbers. And I have these accent things just baked into my being. Only four years later, a surprisingly short time by the standards of the day, he left with a prize of 300 francs for solo playing. This money financed the acquisition of an instrument by Carl Giuseppe Testore. More on that later. And Bottazzini was on his way to being stamped as Paganini of the double bass. Here's where I can't help but start to see the Elvis comparisons. <laughs> In 1846, at just 24 years old, Bottazzini had already toured Italy and played a debut concert in Vienna. At this point, he took a position as principal bass of Havana's Opera Orchestra, which soon headed to New York in a summer tour of the United States. It's incredible to me the amount of touring that Bottazzini did in his day and what that touring must have been like. They didn't even have steamboats at this point. The railroad was just getting going. Can you imagine hauling a base in the mid 19th century all over the world, North America, South America, Italy, Africa? It's just incredible to think about. During this US tour, Bottazzini and a few other orchestra members regularly took to the stage at intermission to play solo works. These solo works overshadowed the entire concert, getting rave reviews even as the company as a whole was being skewered by the press. A critic in 1847 wrote the following about a performance of Moses in Egypt. The chorus throughout were all bad, all shouting and no singing. A want of rehearsal was evident throughout the entire band, always excepting Bottazzini the splendid contrabassist who is ever prompt and efficient. From the Boston Post, he burst forth in a perfect blaze of power, brilliancy, and incredible feats of combined force and delicacy. From the Knickerbocker, he is the Paganini of that cumbersome instrument and hugs it as closely and tenderly as the mighty wizard fondled his favorite Cremona or Stradivarius. Perhaps the most bizarrely enthusiastic review came from the Philadelphia North American. Imagine a wild, lank-haired, dreamy-eyed Italian flying with a ferocity that makes you dizzy to see, with a discharge of infantry on the ground floor and a sky full of rockets from the housetop, all at the same instant, and all crashing, cracking, whirling, and corcussating in the air at once. This would be something like Bottazzini playing the double bass. Playing bass is not a joke. Use my bow and give it a poke. All the other bases, they are broke. Could've heard me play that harmonic and go. Yes, I use my bow. My name is Bottazzini. That's all you need to know. Bottazzini was a frustrated composer who found himself branded his entire life as a double bass soloist. He yearned to be taken more seriously as a composer, but in many ways he was just too popular as a bass soloist. The fees he received for his solo playing were outrageously high, even higher than Chopin, who was one of the most popular performers of the day. Regarding this composer-performer conflict in Bottazzini's life, the director of the Teatro Reggio, who mounted the first performance of Bottazzini's opera Ero e Leandro, stated, if his virtuosity made him a famous concert artist, it was at the expense of composing. He more often than not proved unequal to the task of composition. The impatience of the concert artist was revealed in obvious improvisations which were merely concessions to the dubious taste of his audience. Having decided to become a composer, he had neither the patience nor the desire to really work at it. It was enough for him that his work sparkled and that he could move on to other things. Bottazzini was notoriously bad with money, blowing it on all sorts of weird luxuries and liberally loaning it out to friends. He found himself perpetually in need of cash, which led him to take ever more solo bass performances 
perpetuating the cycle of bass performer over composer. Historically speaking, one of Bottazzini's greatest achievements has to be his conducting of the premiere of Verdi's Aida. Many assume that Bottazzini and Verdi were close friends, but research by Thomas Martin and others has shown that this is not actually the case. And by the way, Bottazzini was choice number four for Verdi for conducting Aida. Though he struggled financially throughout his life despite earning tremendous fees, Bottazzini's legacy, especially on the double bass, is here to stay. We are left with a huge array of works for double bass and orchestra and many other combinations, music that captures the essence of the bass beautifully, and also captures that bel canto Bellini style of the mid 19th century. Many organizations worldwide are dedicated to preserving and promoting the legacy of Bottazzini with regular competitions and research. And after many years out of the public eye, that testore bass that Bottazzini played on his whole career, it came back into the public eye with a wonderful release from Catalan Rotaro. That's a quick-ish look at the life and times of Giovanni Bottazzini. I really hope you enjoyed this. I have links to all the research that I did for this video in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, check out my video on Dittersdorf and why his double bass concerto is so popular. We'll link up to that here. <laughs>